I'm uh, with Isabel Oakshot. We're discussing uh, all aspects of the migrant crisis, which I think you'll agree has uh, expanded into just an astonishing shambles. Uh, I think uh, not many of us uh, thought that much of the Rwanda scheme, but at least it was something. All the Labour Party seemed to have done is to get rid of all deterrents, and now they're just saying to everyone, to all comers, uh, give us your asylum uh, application, or hang on, tick, you can stay. Uh, which is my next big question, really. Really, we've touched on it already, Isabel, but uh, we're talking about 70,000 migrants are about to be, if you like, legitimised. Mm. Uh, the Tories are saying it could be as many as 120,000. I wouldn't uh, argue with that. Uh, and uh, we know now that there are 400 migrants living on the Bibby Stockholm barge who will be kicked out by January. What is going to happen to all of these people? Well, it's a very good question because supposedly Labour is not going to be accommodating more in hotels. It'd be quite embarrassing for them to take out new contracts with hotels, having disapproved of the whatever it is, eight million a day, I think is the cost of hotel accommodation. Yeah, sure, yeah. The government made such, the last government made such a ha complete hash of unravelling that. You know, they also had a couple of sites on. Uh, former MOD premises, that was all, that's all being unravelled by this lot. None of it ever uh, was ever done with any conviction mm. because there are always going to be human rights lawyer lovies and other refugee charities and all the rest of it saying this is inhumane and so on. You have to have real courage of conviction and actually be prepared to test the absolute boundaries of the law. And the last government wasn't willing to take those risks and they didn't act as if they were utterly determined to do it so surprise surprise it all failed so where does that leave this new government as every single day more migrants come in by a bunch of different methods each and every one of those migrants we don't want anyone living rough on our streets so each and every one has to be found a roof over their head sorry where's it coming from exactly right uh, by the way i liked the uh well, i say liked I'm saying this uh, facetiously, but I liked the uh, 12 migrants, the enterprising migrants who nicked a yacht uh, last week and sailed across <laughs> in this rather plush shell of uh, family yacht and arrived, and they're now among us, of course. Uh, that's the point. So Yvette Cooper, by legalising everyone, yeah. is, is saying, uh, oh, well, this is, will save 7.7 .7 billion in accommodation costs. That's so presumably the plan is this. Once we've given these people asylum, that mm. bearing in mind they weren't going to get asylum, uh, but now they will with our brave new government. Uh, so presumably they're just going to cast them out there because they're not going to provide accommodation anymore because they're going to save the money on that. So again, I come back to my question, what, what, where do they go? What do they do? I mean, well, <laughs> I'm afraid the reality is that some are going to end up doing the wrong thing, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, if you've got, if you if you just land here and you're on your uppers, um, then what are you going to do? You're going to fall into the wrong hands um, and make money in whatever way you can. And even if they were to do all the right things and try to find good jobs and be contributors, we know there's a housing crisis already. Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe this is why, uh, as part of the Queen's speech last week, as part of these new legislation, legislative measures yeah. that are planned on landlords, uh, the new government is saying landlords are not going to be able to pick and choose mm. who rents their properties and, and you're not allowed to discriminate against people who are coming in who want to rent your property if they're on benefits. Maybe that's because they know that there's going to be an absolute ballooning mm. demand for cheap rental properties from people who don't have any money. But that proves, uh, that King's speech did prove, uh, you know, what a kind of... Uh, kind of deceitful government we've got in yeah. so far as you know they came through the election campaign oh yeah we've got all these plans we're gonna catch, catch the evil people smugglers you know set up the border command security force which by the way just isn't going to work and what's happening with it anyway uh, Yvette's border command border security command it's called isn't it well you know you said oh we're gonna hire this 200,000 pounds a year big wig uh, sharp shooter and we're gonna put hundreds of coppers all over the continent. Well, get on with it then. It's not going to work, but at least do something. And we're just nothing happening. Uh, and uh, so 
when these people uh, sort of just filter into our society, as it were, you know, as I say, they're almost certainly, as you allude to, they're almost certainly going to become benefit claimers. Yeah. So this £7.7 .7 billion pounds, uh, is going to look like uh, chump change. Yeah, uh, the, the burden on the British taxpayer grows greater by the day. I just don't know, how does this look in five years' time? How does it look? I think that we are going to have so much strain on the system. You know, Ines Labour is really going to be able to achieve what they say they're going to on housing. The whole system is just going to collapse. I, I, I can't see how there's going to be enough property for everybody. Yeah, we'll talk about this in a minute, but meanwhile, as uh, Yvette does her best to sort of, you know, kind of filter in all these uh, migrants into a British society, just say, oh, you can stay, off you go, good luck, hope, hope you get a job, hope you can find somewhere to live, you know, you know anyway, enjoy the country. Whilst she's uh, doing that, they're still coming across. Uh, as I say, if they come across at the rate of the last, this is going to be two thousand a week throughout the summer, and uh, that was, that may well be an underestimation. This starmada is going to happen, folks. So when these people arrive, what then happens to them? Where where are they putting them now? Now that they're saying, oh, no more hotels, no more, no more of that wasting of money. I mean, where are they going to uh, put I'll them? I tell you what, what it's, happens is the great... there's no there's no joined up thinking here. Yeah, I'm looking at my phone now because I wanted to talk about, and we might want to go into more detail on this tomorrow as well because yes. I've got more information it, coming yeah. in um, but what happens in these situations is many of these people can't speak any English I know this because I've encountered these people in the last week or so um, in certain parts of this country and they've just got no English at all so if you've got no English you can't assimilate what then happens when you need hospital care or when you get you come up against the court system you need translators. Oh, so yeah, cool. Tell I have, us about I this. have just been this sent... This is exclusive, folks. Listen to yeah, this. Yeah, this is really interesting. So I have just received some very interesting figures from the Ministry of Justice. This comes through a Freedom of Information request, and it is about the cost of translation services. And this is over a 12-month period. Um, it, so I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. In the courts and tribunal services, they needed... 134,502 cases of translation, uh, which cost a cool 24.36 million. So they got 24 million quid? 24 million quid for translation services Tra in the courts and tribunal services. But that's only, a, that's only a little glimpse of the scale of the problem. So let's look at the probation service. That needed telephone translation calls so these are these are migrants who've uh, broken the law yeah basically these are so 24 million to translate for. overseas nationals who can't speak english i mean the only reason they'll not speak english is because they are they weren't let me, born let me here just let me just someone. put that out there so there you go folks isabella's just revealed that uh, we're not sure of the time scale but uh, it won't be a 12 month period tw 12 month period 24.6 million pounds spent translating for migrants, asylum seekers who've broken the law. And other overseas nationals. And other yeah. overseas nationals. £24.6 million. Pounds. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, what is the word there? Madness? <sighs> I, unbelievable. I mean, what the, the word is, and it's a few words, the words are tip of the iceberg. Yeah. So look at the probation service, telephone translation calls. So no one's on probation <laughs> unless they've done something <laughs> yeah, wrong, yeah, right? Yeah, that does tend so to be they had to, yeah. they had to provide translation services in nearly 18,000 calls. And that cost a hundred and nearly a hundred and eighty-one thousand pounds. Then you've got this probation service, face-to-face -face translation visits. So that's let's just just li listen to what that actually means. Probation visits. So actual translators accompanying prison officers or probation officers to see people who've done the wrong thing, and they can't speak any English mm. or enough English. Twelve thousand eight hundred visits that cost. 623 grand. They so they broke the law. They're not going back to their countries. They're not deporting them. We're spending millions and millions I of mean, pounds translating so they can navigate our legal system that they've abused. That's great, isn't it? Do Unbelievable. You know what, do you know what? This is everywhere. You know, when I was in um, Boston and Skegness a couple of weeks ago, in the, in the town of Boston, uh, on the bins, some of the things that 
some of the instructions that say don't throw litter on the ground here's your bin people are in, are in bulgarian i mean look if the bin isn't obviously a bin yeah. then i'm not really sure well, what you're the, doing living around I here i guess the bins know their audience you know unbelievable mm.